If Prop 13 gets repealed, property taxes could go from $1,000 to over $10,000 every single year. Coming right up. Hey guys, how's it going? And if it's your first time here, welcome to the Everything Real Estate Investing Show, where we go over tips, tricks, and investing strategies to teach you more about the business and to help you achieve your financial goals. My name is Sean Pan, and I'm a real estate investor here in the Bay Area. And today, we're gonna to talk about Prop 13 and how there are some people out there who wanna repeal it for all of us Californians. So as I mentioned in another video, Prop 13 is a proposition that allows Californian property owners to retain their property tax basis. So what that means is that if you purchase a property here in California, you will now start paying 1% of that sales price as property tax every single year. So for example, if you bought a brand new house, for $1 million, you now have to pay $10,000 on that property every single year. But Prop 13 is also really good because it caps the amount that your property taxes can increase every single year. So Prop 13 says that your property taxes can only increase up to 2% every single year. So you bought a house for a million this year and it costs $10,000 in property taxes. Next year, the most you're gonna have to pay for property taxes is $10,200 because you can only increase by 2% every single year. Now Prop 13 got passed way back in the 70s. So people who have held onto their properties since the 1970s have not seen their property taxes increase a significant amount in that whole time. And that's how some people who own properties, like they can say in Palo Alto, that are now worth $2.5 million, are still only paying a couple thousand dollars a year in property taxes. Because when they bought it back in the 70s, maybe their property was only worth $70,000. So back then, they were paying $700 a year. And every year since then, their property taxes have only increased by 2% every single year, even though the property values have soared. But can you imagine going from, let's say, $2,000 a year in property taxes to all of a sudden getting reassessed and now having to pay $25,000 because Prop 13 got repealed? That's what some people were facing earlier this year. Luckily, because of a lot of you know, talks and back and forth, the people who are proposing to repeal Prop 13 took a step back and said, okay, we're not gonna repeal the homeowners portion of it. Instead, we're gonna go over these giant corporations who have held onto these large commercial properties, you know, industrial size, $100 million commercial buildings since the 1970s. And they said, these people are not paying their fair share of property taxes. You know, the government needs money. They have a budget. And I think most of the money that's gonna come from these property taxes are gonna go to schools and other government programs. So, you know, in every scenario in politics, there's always people who are on one side and you know, they have their beliefs and there's people on the other side and they have their beliefs as well. So no one's really right or wrong. It's all a gray area. So it's just so interesting to me because I'm a real estate investor and I see this and I think, you know, one of the main reasons why real estate investing is great is because of things like Prop 13 or the fact that you can 1031 exchange a property and then, you know, basically delay paying your capital gains taxes. And there's already so much downside to owning properties here in California in the first place. Like they just passed rent control in California. Now this won't really affect commercial buildings, but it's just something to keep in mind. So yeah, the people who are making this law, they said, okay, we're not gonna go over, you know, the senior citizens, or we're not gonna go over the regular Joe Schmo because obviously there's gonna be a lot of public backlash, especially because most of the people who will be affected by a repeal of Prop 13 are gonna be senior citizens, right? They're the ones who have held their properties for 30, 40, 50 plus years, and they're on a fixed income, you know, they don't make any more money. And to go from something like $2,000 a year to $25,000 a year, well, like, just because neighborhood blew up doesn't mean that, you know, they have the ability to pay all that money. So they said, okay, let's focus on these large commercial property owners. And there's two caveats to that. So one, it's a building that has to be, you know, worth over $3 million. So if it's under $3 million, they'll say, you know what, you're too small, don't worry about it, you know, we'll get you next time. And the other thing is, if it's above $3 million, they also wanna only impact, you know, large corporations. So if you're a small mom and pop shop, a small company is defined as a corporation with under 50 employees, and you know, doesn't have like a nationwide presence. It's basically, this is a California company, and you know, their headquarters is here, they only have this many people in this building, then yeah, they are also exempt from this property tax increase. But the thing is, if they allow this to happen to these big corporations, what's ultimately gonna happen? 
you know, they've also had their property from maybe the 1970s. So to go from like, you know, a 1970s basis all the way to like 2020 basis, it's gonna be huge. It's gonna be like a huge hit to their bottom line. And so what happens? You know, the business could be less profitable now and they might have to shut their doors or they might have to sell their building. And then ultimately who suffers? We do as the customer because guess who buys their products? We do. So the way that they can make their money back is by increasing their prices and then making us pay for it on the back end. And then on top of that, if it gets passed for them, then what's to say that it won't get passed for us in the future? It's kind of scary. You know, it's kind of like you always see them as an enemy and you don't support them. So then it's okay. You know, they're these big corporations. We won't support them. Let them pay the taxes, whatever. But then what happens when it comes back to us? No one's going to fight for us if we don't fight for them. So it's just something to think about in the future. And it's actually pretty funny because I remember about a year ago, I was having a conversation with my friend's ex-girlfriend and she works at a law firm that specializes in these large commercial real estate transactions. And she was helping one buyer purchase a 49% stake in one of the most famous buildings in San Francisco. And I asked her, why would someone only buy 49% of the building? And she said, it's because she didn't want to trigger the Prop 13. And at the time, I didn't really understand it. But basically, if they bought over 50% of the share, then you know Prop 13 would trigger and they'd have to pay property taxes on an increased basis. But since they're only trading at 49%, technically no one has really changed ownership this whole time. You're only buying a 49% stake here and there. And they're using that as a way to bypass this law. So it kind of sucks that now, you know, this building will obviously get affected by it and everyone's gonna start paying property taxes on a reassessed level. And it's gonna be painful. I don't really know what's gonna happen. Maybe the old guard will trade hands and maybe not. And see, that's the thing. Back in like the 1970s, people don't wanna be reassessed, right? So they obviously passed Prop 13. The thing was, homeowners generally do trade their properties on a regular basis. Every 10 years or so, a regular person is probably gonna sell their home and then buy another home. It's just a normal way things go. But commercial buildings have the possibility of just staying with one owner for a very long time. Like the Sobrato family, where they have a $1 billion portfolio that they just purchase commercial properties and then hold on to them for a very long time. Like their strategy is to never sell buildings. And I think that's amazing. I would love to have that. I think they've been in business for over four generations, so it's pretty awesome. But yeah, they're gonna be really impacted by this because you know they've held properties for a very long time and pretty much all of their buildings will be reassessed in the near future. So let me know what you think. Do you think it's okay to repeal Prop 13 or should we keep it as is? I think it's gonna go on the November 2020 ballot, so keep an eye out for that proposition. Anyways, hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Please like it if you haven't already and subscribe to see more videos just like this one. And this question was actually brought to me by a YouTube viewer. Thank you so much for your question. If you have any more questions or any other topics that you want me to cover, please write down in the comments below and I'll be sure to get to it when I have the chance. And if you want to know how some investors are making huge profits in one of the most expensive markets in the world, go to my website, everythingrei.com and download your free Ultimate Bay Area Investing Handbook. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. We'll